Hey guys, I'm Angela, and this week in Hobby News, we're taking a look at some Holy Dragons. The Sisters of Silence can be run by themselves, and Borderlands has a new board game out on Kickstarter. So let's go ahead and get into it in this week's Hobby News. Let's go ahead and start with Total War Warhammer 3 and their Nurgle preview because you might notice I've got a little bit of a frog in my throat, got a little bit of a cold, but that doesn't stop us from talking about the news and Nurgle is super appropriate. So there was a brand new trailer and I love the spotlight that we got on all of the Nurgle models that are going to be in this game. We've got some Nurgle totes, which is fantastic and I feel like I am one right now. We also got some exploding pustules, which were disgusting, but completely thematically appropriate and I loved it. But my favorite part about this trailer is the fact that we actually got a bunch of Nurglings and we got to see a little bit more of how they move and how they're attacking in the trailer and I love it. They run in little swarms just like you would run them in the tabletop version of the game because they do come as a little mass and they also just launch themselves onto people and it is spectacular. I love that we're getting all of the big Nurgle like monsters and everything in this game. I'm definitely going to be playing them when it comes out. Next up, we need to talk about a little bit of a mistake that GW made in one of their recent kits. Well, the new dragon kits have released for Age of Sigmar, and in the new Krondis set, there is a major problem because there's a hole in one of the arms. If you bought this set and you open it up, apparently in all of the boxes, there is a miscast on the six portion of the sprue, which happens to be one of his front arms, and there's a nice little hole there, which means that when you actually attach it to the model, there's a hole in his chest, and that's not great. So if you happen to get this model for friends or family for the holidays, you may wanna open the box and check it to see if yours happen to be miscast as well, because like I said, it sounds like the majority of them are. All right, now earlier in the week, we got a lot of previews for the Gene Stealers and the Custodes, but that is not the thing that impressed me the most. And they've been out for a little while, so I'm sure you guys have all had time to take a look at them. But I wanted to talk about the fact that now the Sisters of Silence can actually be run solo as their own army, which makes me incredibly happy. I love the Sisters of Battle, and I've always been interested in the Sisters of Silence, but they never were something that you could run by themselves. And while the Custodes are very, very cool, I really wanted to run a full golden armored like Sisters of Silence army, right? And now I can, because in the new codex that's coming out for the Talons of the Emperor, they are getting their own warlord traits. They're gonna have relics. They're going to have, of course, crusade rules. Who knows if anybody will actually use them, but they're also getting some new units, which allows them to actually be run standalone from the Custodes, which I think is really, really cool. We're going to be getting a new HQ unit specifically called the Knight Centura. And while she isn't very strong or tough because she's only got threes there in those stats, she's going to be able to hit pretty consistently because she's got a two up ballistic skill and weapon skill, which is pretty rad. Plus the sculpt is neat. I really, really like it. Additionally, she has a new aura that affects all core Sisters of Silence units, and it gives them a re-roll ones, I believe, on the wound roll. So that's pretty cool as well. So she's got a nice little buff that she can give to other models that are specifically core. The other great thing about this change is now the Sister of Silence that came with the Valerian, the Custodes model from that Black Library set, um, her name is Aaliyah, you can actually run her by herself now, which is great because when she first came out in that set with the custodian, they could only run together, but she couldn't actually run in the army with him, so he never really got ran. So now both those models are actually usable, which is fantastic because I have one, and since I am very, very interested in a Sisters of Silence list, I might have her end up being my warlord. Hello, Imperial Citizen. This is your regular reminder to subscribe to the channel and hit the Emperor's bell for notifications. And if you're feeling particularly devout, you can join my Patreon where you'll get exclusive unboxings, behind the scenes content, and more. Now, let's go ahead and get back to the video. 
As of recording, the US Open 2021 finale has occurred. It occurred in Texas. And if you were lucky and had time to this weekend, you could have caught it on Twitch. Now, the thing that I think is interesting about this whole tournament is more so that they actually preview two new uh, mission pack or missions from the new Grand Tournament mission pack that's coming out next year. The first one is Secure Missing Artifacts, and the other one is Recover the Relics. Now, since this article has originally come out talking about these two missions that were used in the tournament, they have released additional missions and we'll be taking a look at those later. But the thing that I find really interesting about these first two that we got to take a look at is they're both leaning towards a more Age of Sigmar style of scoring in that they are doing a hold one, hold two, or hold more type of scoring. Um, like basically ability or not ability, that's not the right word, but there's, that's how they're scoring. You hold one, you score, hold two or more, you score. If you hold more than your opponent, you score. And this is something we see in Age of Sigmar a lot. And I'm very, very, very curious to see if these Age of Sigmar-like rules that are coming in mean that we're slowly approaching our 10th edition Warhammer 40K. And if that means we're going to be getting something more akin to what happened when fantasy transitioned into Age of Sigmar, and maybe we're gonna move into Age of the Emperor or something like that. But I feel like things might be changing soon because we do see some adjustments coming to how rules are handled, how scoring occurs in all of this. So this could also actually be tied to the survey that they gave us recently, because in that, they they were talking a lot about scoring and stratagems and what you liked and didn't like about the game. So I'm curious if this is starting to roll out some of those input and feedback that they got during that survey. Let me know what you think down below. Next up, just because I wanted to call him out because I thought he was super rad, we've got a brand new model coming to Blood Bowl and it is a bazooka wielding dwarf and he is amazing. I personally don't have any desire to run a dwarf um, like team or anything like that. But this model is so cool that I might end up picking it up just to paint because there is so much just cool stuff happening. I love the bazooka. I think it's great that it's actually firing out a football that is, a, or a blood bowl ball, I guess, um, cause that is amazing. And I just, I always want to compliment the designers of these miniatures when they end up getting to work on anything that's not the main lines because I feel like they get so much more freedom to be fun and playful and Blood Bowl especially because it's so zany and really keeps to that old world goofiness that you, it used to have. They still maintain that. So they get to do a lot of really cool things with the models. So I'm really liking this guy. Next, we're gonna talk about Bala and Burke because I don't understand this advertisement. He is an orc. He is painted red, I will give you, but he has absolutely nothing to do with the holidays, yet they put holiday music on him, and I just do not get it. Do they just, did they run out of holiday stuff to produce? I mean, they had stockings and wrapping paper and a whole bunch of other stuff. Why not, if you're gonna have this advertisement being really like holiday themed, especially, especially when you've already had an orc or squig bomb actually for your holiday model, why would you do this? Unless, the only reason I would accept this is if they actually gave me this model in a snow globe because they use that in the advertisement and I actually think that's really cool, but of course they're not gonna do that. It's just a normal model, you can run it in your game. I just, I don't know, I don't really get this ad. I think it's a bit weird, but the model looks really cool. Maybe it's a Silent Night thing. He's a rat catcher and there's mice in the Silent Night. So like, maybe that's the tie-in. Who knows, maybe someone can explain it to me in the comments. In a corporate battle for self-promotion, entertainment on Pandora needs to be action-packed and exciting. Welcome to the Boring! My nerds packed the Hyperion New You Network to bring you some of the finest and pirated entertainment. Reach across time and space and kill anyone you want. That sounds f***ing awesome! Are we back? Gather your friends to play in this cooperative game or run your team solo versus hordes of enemies with our reaction game system. 
Climb your way to victory across grueling arena battles devised by the tournament sponsor, awesome. Mr. Torque. There is an acceptable amount of carnage on this box art. Welcome to my arena of badassery. Those who are about to explode, salute me. As you battle, earn rewards, gain valuable skills, and don't forget the explosions, pets, mounds of guns and loot. Don't hold back on the slaughter. Torque believes in you. Accept my sponsorship and win fabulous prizes! Continue to expand play with new missions, enemies, and bosses. Now that's badass! Time to blow up this motherfucking Kickstarter! Back my arena of badassery! The last thing that I want to talk about in the news this week is a brand new Kickstarter that's out for the Borderlands Mr. Torg Torg's Arena of Badassery. Now, this is a brand new Kickstarter that is put up by Monster Fight Club and Gearbox, and I'm actually really interested in it, so much so that when they contacted me and asked if I wanted to paint a model for them, I was like, heck yeah, I'll totally paint a Borderlands model. What do you got to send me? So they sent me a Claptrap, and they also sent me a Ganger. I'm gonna be painting the Claptrap here soon. Be keeping an eye out for that. But let's talk about this actual game and what you might be getting if you go in for the Kickstarter. So. You are going to be playing a miniatures game, and in this, you are going to, it's a competitor, it's a, sorry, it is a cooperative board game for one to four players, and in it, you and your friends must defeat hordes of bandits, skags, and other challenges to prove to Mr. Torg that you are the badass, the most badass out there, so I hope you can do it. Now, I really think this is cool because, like I said, the miniatures look rad. They've been previewing a bunch of the new sculpts that they're going to be adding into the game, that haven't fully been approved yet, but they're looking really cool and I hope they do get approved. And there's about like 45, I think, miniatures that you're getting in just the base game itself. So you can find this on Kickstarter. I'll have a link in the description below. Make sure to check it out for sure. And then make sure to check the channel for when I have the painting video featuring Claptrap. All right, that has been it for the news. Again, sorry about the slight frog in my throat. Nurgle Plague has just affected me a little bit, but I'm hoping by this weekend I'll be back to normal order and we'll be able to do some normal news and also have another hobby video for you on Friday. Anyways, I have been Angela. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching another episode of Hobby Night. I'll see you next time. And before I head out, I need to thank my patrons because I almost forgot to. So let's go ahead and thank all of you guys who have supported me on Patreon. You guys are the best. You make me, make it so that I can like do this. So thank you guys so, so very much. Anyways, now I'm signing off. See you later.